Good morning to all. I welcome you all to the national webinar series on COVID-19 and nutrition organized by Department of Food Processing and Nutrition, Karnataka State Akamhadevi Women University, Bijapur. Today's session is on dietary recommendations for non-communicable diseases during COVID-19. To talk on this, we have with us Dr. Renuka Meiti. Dr. Renuka Meiti presently working as Associate Professor and Chairperson of the Department of Food Processing and Nutrition, Karnataka State Akamadivi Women University. She has 25 years of vast experience in teaching. She chaired sessions in several conferences and seminars, delivered a series of lectures in state and national level programs. She organized several workshops and training programs. Recent being one is training on fish and fish byproducts in collaboration with the Department of Zoology in the Karnataka State Akamadevi Women University. She has published several research papers in national and international journals. We are delighted to have you in this webinar program. On behalf of Karnataka State Akamadevi Women University and participants, I welcome you to this national webinar series. We are Excited to hear from you. Over to you, madam. Thank you, Nataraj, for your introduction. Good morning, dear delegates. Over the past six days, we have learned about hunger, malnutrition, traditional foods, healthy diets, nutrition transition, and today we are dealing with the dietary modifications during non-communicable diseases. Friends, you all know over the past 5-6 months, we have faced a very challenging, highly contagious disease that is COVID-19. Ever before such virus, we have found in nature that we had to undergo lockdown due to this virus appearance in India all over world. So this virus attacked many people which all of us know government declared a high emergency. Simultaneously during this five to six years there were many deaths, silent deaths you can say, silent deaths due to non-communicable diseases. So, what are those non-communicable diseases and their diagnosis, treatment, prevention? Let us see today. A non-communicable diseases, usually in brief, they are termed as NCDs, also known as chronic diseases, tend to be of long duration and are the result of a combination of genetic, physiological environmental and behavior factors. As you all know, this virus, COVID-19 virus was highly contagious. It is acute in nature and for a short period or short duration. Whereas these non-communicable diseases, they are chronic and they are for a longer period. The country is experiencing a rapid health transition with the rising burden of non-communicable diseases which are emerging as the leading cause of death in India, accounting for over 42% of all deaths with considerable loss in potentiality productive years that is between 35 to 64 years of life. According to WHO report, cardiovascular diseases will be the largest cause of death and disability in India. It is estimated that the overall prevalence of diabetes, hypertension, ischemic heart diseases and stroke is 62.47, 159.46, 37 and 1.54 respectively per 1000 population of India. According to National Family Health Survey 4 2015-16, in the age group of 15 to 49 years, 8% of men and 5.8% of women in India have high random blood sugar levels 
and 13.6% men and 8.8% women are hypertensive. Friends, the cost implications of this non-NCD that is non-NCDs, non-communicable diseases to society are enormous and run into thousands of crores of rupees that include direct cost to people with illness, their families and indirect cost to society due to reduced productivity. So, let us see what are the complications and their characteristics of development of non-communicable diseases. Non-communicable diseases are caused by non-reversible pathological alterations. They require a long-term systematic approach to the treatment. They have a long latent period between the exposure and causes. Here we can make out our COVID-19 which enters the body, human body is clearly the signs and symptoms are shown within fortnight. But whereas these non-communicable diseases, they silently enter the body and to show the signs and symptoms, it takes maybe years together. So, once they set in, they are permanent guest for our body. But whereas this COVID-19, it sets in and stays there for a short period and disappears. But whereas with respect to non-communicable, they are our permanent guest and they are most irreversible and disability and fatality rate is high, then they require special training of the patient rehabilitation because once the guest has come and staying with us in our body permanently, then we have to manage them through a systematic dietary um, uh, management. And the NCDs have emerged as the major causes of morbidity and mortality worldwide. Let us see the types. What are the different types of NCDs? Majorly the cardiovascular diseases, cancers, diabetes, blindness and respiratory, chronic respiratory diseases. What are the risk factors for development of non-communicable diseases? tobacco use, alcohol consumption, raised blood sugar, blood pressure, obesity, diet, physical inactivity, diabetes mellitus, high serum cholesterol. If you go on listing the risk factors list, there is no end for it. So, tobacco chewing, alcohol, continuous drinking of alcohol, impaired raised, impaired raised blood pressure, obesity, diet, physical inactivity, diabetes mellitus, high serum cholesterol, all will invite the development of NCDs. Here this picture gives you the behavioral risk factors which is individual, what we inculcate, imbibe the practices, unhealthy practices that will lead to second circular that is development of pathological risk and the third circular that will lead to disease outcomes. So, what are those behavioral risk factors? Tobacco, alcohol, physical inactivity and nutrition. And majority time and most of the time, we are addicted to tobacco, alcohol, physical inactivity, some kind of status after maybe the age of 20, 25 or 30 and even nutrition, imbalance in the nutrition. So, not taking the proper balance that that will lead to slowly not immediately how the COVID-19 virus affects within fortnight immediately no it is very slowly degradation of our system that will lead over the years what body mass index it will affect the body mass index blood pressure blood glucose and the cholesterol as you all know the body BMI, body mass index for a normal person, it should be between 18.5 to 24.9. So, it is ideal weight for height for a male or a female. So, if it is more than 25, then it is called said to be a person is obese and obesity grade 1, 2, 3, so on. So, blood pressure, the normal blood pressure all of us know that is 120 mmHg bar 80. So, if it is more than the required, then the person will be having 
raised blood pressure then the blood glucose the normal blood glucose all of you know that is 90 to 114 grams percentage and if it is more than that then the person will be having hyperglycemia then cholesterol increased cholesterol normal is 200 milligram per 100 ml and if it is more than the 200 milligram per 100 ml the person is having hypercholesterol in the body so subsequently these all parameters will develop into disease they are nothing but heart diseases stroke diabetes cancer respiratory diseases over a period of time now let us see one by one the cardiovascular diseases the cardio cvds is a set of diseases usually we call it as cardiovascular diseases refers to the class of diseases that involve the heart or blood vessels arteries and veins while the term technically refers to any disease that affects the cardiovascular system it is usually used to refer to those related to atherosclerosis so there might be angina pectoris that is there might be a heart attack there might be a development of atheroma all together is called as a cardiovascular diseases what are the risk factors for development of cardiovascular diseases over the time there are two you can say non modifiable and modifiable and are non modifiable which you cannot change okay they are age sex and family history and are modifiable which are under our control cigarette smoking high bp diabetes obesity physical inactivity and stress now let's see one by one these non modifiable factors age aging increases your risk of damaged and narrowed arteries and weakened or thickened heart muscle younger the age more safe older the age naturally it will invite or the arteries will be shortened constricted for the flow of the blood so thereby development of cardiovascular diseases coming to sex men are generally at greater risk of heart disease however women's risk increases after menopause until menopause there will be a secretion of sex hormones estrogen and progesterone they are usually protecting the women during the menstruation period after the menopausal even woman is at equal risk of development of cardiovascular diseases coming to family history a family history of heart disease increases your risk of coronary artery diseases especially if a parent developed it at any early age before, before age of 55 for a male relative such as your brother or a father and 65 for a female relative such as your mother or a sister so coming to family history it is also called as genetic if both the parents are obese obesity having obesity then there are chances of offspring getting the cvds is 80% if one of the parent is obese then chances of getting offspring the development of cvd is about 40 to 50% then coming to modifiable factors which are under individuals control that is smoking so in the cigarette nicotine this chemical is present this nicotine what it does it constricts your blood vessels over the period of years not because today you have started smoking tomorrow it will not show the result but definitely it depends upon how severe the one smokes if he is a chain smoker or if he is a middle smoker or if he is a mild smoker so nicotine constricts your blood vessels and carbon monoxide can damage their inner lining making them more susceptible to atherosclerosis heart attacks are more common in smokers than in non smokers usually we say the smokers are equally competent you can say for the development of cvd same wise even the passive smokers those who are with the active smokers those who inhale the smoking so that they are also equally you can say 
uh, they are at the risk of development of cardiovascular disease. Coming to high blood pressure, uncontrolled high blood pressure can result in hardening and thickening of your arteries narrowing the vessels through which blood flows. Then diabetes, uncontrolled diabetes. Diabetes increases the risk of development of heart diseases. Both conditions share similar risk factors such as obesity and high blood pressure. Now, obesity excess weight typically worsens the risk factors. So as I said 18.5 to 24.9 index BMI index is normal. So as far as possible we have got to maintain our body weight normal. If it goes more than 25 slowly we will be inviting the development of cardiovascular diseases. Physical inactivity. A lack of exercise also is associated with many forms of heart disease and some of its other risk factors as well. Then stress. Unrelieved stress may damage your arteries and worsen other risk factors for heart diseases. Then another one is very important hypertension, the development of higher blood pressure. The normal blood pressure as you all know it is 120 by 80 mm Hg. Then blood pressure more than 140 by 19 mm of Hg at the age of 20 years is said to be a hypertension. Then blood pressure more than 160 by 94 mm of Hg at the age of 50 years or more is said to be hypertension. Now coming to the preventive aspects of cardiovascular diseases. So Quitting smoking is very important if a person is a, a long chain or a very severe smoker then he should quit. So when while doing counselling when we say if you are a smoker if he says the person says yes I am a smoker then quit smoking means it will not bring in any transformation in his regular daily habits. So how to quit the smoking? So if he is smoker for 20 cigarettes per day, ask him to reduce it by 50 to 60 percent. Then after one week from 10 to 8 or 6, then from 6 to 4 or 5. Like that there should be a gradual withdrawal of cigarettes. The same thing even applies to even chronic alcoholics. If they are heavy drinkers of 1000 ml or 1.5 liters per day, then asking them to reduce daily or weekly on weekly basis to 50% of it then 40% of it then 30% of it and simultaneously you know counseling is very essential for withdrawal of smoking as well as alcohol consumption. Then control other health conditions such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol and diabetes in the prevention aspects is very important. And exercise at least 30 minutes a day on most of the days of the week is very important. Immediately when we start thinking that okay let me be very healthy henceforth tomorrow onwards I will start walking regularly. So maybe for one week we do with lot of vigor and zeal and uh, happiness we do and after one week we start giving excuses. So that should not be the regimen for developing a good practice of exercises on daily basis. Every day whether it is a chill or sun or rainy so one should get up and go for walking especially after the age of 40s which will really stimulate our blood arteries and muscles so they will remain in a very smooth toning. So exercise at least 30 minutes a day on most of the weeks then eat a diet that's low in salt and saturated fat maintain a healthy weight and reduce and manage the stress. Coming to the treatment, lifestyle changes is very important as just now I said 30 minutes a walk. Men usually what happens they get up and go for a walk but the problem is always associated with the woman. Majority of the time a woman after 40s and 45 give excuses for not able to go out of home for walking. Some days she says some excuses, some day relatives came, guests came, festivals came, this and that. So some or the other excuses will be there. But mind you dear all women after 40s, 
you are the best doctor for your body so your body nobody is going to take care of you have got to take care of your body so you have got to sacrifice yourself you have to spend some time for yourself at least a minimum minimum say 1 hour in the morning and 1 hour in the evening for your health sake you have to spend some time then regarding the treatment coming to the medications if lifestyle changes aren't alone aren't enough your doctor may prescribe medications to control your heart diseases the type of medication will depend on the type of the heart diseases then medical procedures and or surgery so along with medications and lifestyle if it is not going to work then surgeries and open heart surgeries are and you know putting stent all this you know under the supervision of the doctor should be carried out then what are the diets that should be you know modified during the cardiovascular diseases usually we say the balanced diet so we should have everything enough amount of cereals pulses milk and milk products nuts and oil seeds then uh, oils and fats sugar and jaggery apart from this some foods which are really good for heart so they are like fish for vegetarians those who cannot eat fish then there is another very important miraculous food which i'll be telling you now now coming to fish it is said the research has said that consumption of fish weekly or 100 to 200 grams not all the fish some fish like mackerel and sardines and tuna and salmon which contain omega 3 fatty acids so these uh, type of fat has been shown to decrease triglycerides and increase the hdl high density lipoprotein cholesterol levels which improves the blood vessel elasticity and thins the blood making it less likely to clot and block blood flow so these fish can be had because they have omega 3 and omega 6 fatty acids which are good for maintaining the conditioning of the heart then what about the vegetarians those who cannot consume fish so for them the omega 3 fatty acids are found in flaxseed usually in local terms it is called as agse or linseed seeds so these linseed seeds this plenty is available especially in north karnataka of course nowadays it is available all over world because lot of research is being done on flax seed and its importance this only vegetarian vegetarian food which has omega 3 fatty acids which protect the uh, heart against the development of heart diseases so this linseed or flax seeds can be used as a bade so what how we use after the meals we can chew them after roasting a little or it can be made into the powder chutney powder that can be had or even in the abroad and all we have seen these flax seed pills pellets are available which can be taken directly with the help of water so this flax seed consumption on daily basis only just 5 grams per day is more than sufficient to get the omega 3 fatty acids coming to vegetable oils all vegetable oils especially the soybean oil rice bran oil corn oil sunflower oil all these oils should be used regularly but one thing should not one should not restrict only with the one type of oil throughout the month or throughout the year one week you try to use one oil then second week second oil how oil should be used then oils for example to give you a simple explanation regarding the usage of oil at household level if at all you are a four people at house residing under one roof or three of you or two of you consider as 1 liter of oil per head for one month so suppose if you are four of you then 4 liters of oil and if you are three of you residing at home then 3 liters of oil per month including putting diya in front of god then if you calculate in this way your oil consumption pattern is always safe 
if you are exceeding your oil consumption more than a 1 liter per head then it is a risky so you try to count calculate how much oil you are using on monthly basis if you are two members in the family use 2 liters of oil if you are three members of in the family use 3 liters of oil so suppose while if you are when you are using 3 liters of oil use one week as a rice bran another week groundnut another week a soya bean oil something like that change because no single oil is complete having its mufa and pufa combinations so that is why when you mix admix or use independently all these oils you are getting proper proportion of mufa polyunsaturated fatty acids pufa and monounsaturated fatty acids which will really protect the heart for the good health coming to fruits and vegetables all fruits and vegetables are rich source of antioxidants so they protect the heart against the development of atheroma fiber the all whole grain cereals and fruits and vegetables have good amount of fiber so as it is recommended by the rda everyone adult should consume minimum 30 to 40 grams of fiber on daily basis then how do we get this fiber we get the fiber from the whole grain say millets millets are very rich source of fiber then all fruits and vegetables then outer skins should not be removed wherever it is possible it should be consumed you know with the peel which not be peel for example cucumber i have seen some people removing the outer peel and have that is not usually encouraged and that is not the correct practice also so fiber should be had along with the outer skin so that you are getting a good soluble fiber and insoluble fiber and what exactly this fiber does in the body why are we highlighting the importance of fiber during cardiovascular diseases even during the diabetes mellitus this fiber is being undigested in the human system so that usually absorbs the excess circulatory fatty acids you may say cholesterol or triglycerides or with, when it comes to with respect to diabetes the excess circulating sugar it binds and it is being excreted by the body so fiber is being not digested naturally excess circulation of the sugar as well as the fatty fats are removed from the body so that is why on regular basis the fiber should be taken coming to nuts and oil seeds so of course nuts when we think of nuts they are very good source of rich source of fats as well as protein and the dense calories as we all know 1 gram of fat or oil yields about 9 kilo calories and 1 gram of fat simultaneously whereas carbohydrates give 1 gram of carbohydrate yields 4 kilo calories so that is why when we are consuming nuts and oil seeds we should restrict to minimum use but definitely there are very good nuts should be consumed on daily basis but not more than 50 grams It should be restricted below 50 grams then for a tea lovers there is a very good news so those who drink tea some research suggest that the antioxidants in tea can help prevent the build up of fatty deposits in the arteries so the antioxidants may also act as an anti blood clotting agent and improve blood vessels dilation to allow increased blood flow but keep in mind what kind of tea should be had tea should be always thin not very thick or delicious creamy tea what we usually have so if you are a very heavy drinker then you must always shift yourself to going for a thin tea thin tea means a more of powder and less of sugar and milk or green tea or black tea tea without having any milk so such kind of tea also is preferred than going for a very strong tea or a very thick tea then foods containing vitamin e so vitamin e is considered as a natural antioxidant so all the whole grains are rich source of vitamin e 
then all vegetable oils are rich source of vitamin E. So, they should be taken ample amount which protect against the heart. Then consumption of garlic and any spices for that matter, a compound in the garlic, a compound in fresh garlic called allicin has been found in some studies to lower the blood cholesterol even, same thing even with turmeric, same thing even with onions. So, they should be used on daily basis to get the better results for to keep your heart healthy. Coming to the next non-communicable disease that is cancer. The word itself cancer makes the person half dead. So, cancer prevalence of cancer is also increasing in India as well as in the world. So, what exactly is the cancer? Cancer is a non-communicable disease where cells grow out of control, invade and destroy normal tissue. You can see in the picture the normal cell division how it takes place and the cancer cell division. Why we do not get to know that cancer has come and only we come to know after the end of second stage or third stage because when cancer cells are produced in the body. So, the body system, the immune system will accept the cancer cell as its own unlike the COVID-19. So, in the viruses what happens when any foreigner, a very foreign substances enter the body, the body system becomes a like as usual call as a warriors. Okay? So, they stand in front like a gatekeepers and they start shooting. So, the one foreign person has entering the body. So, let us create a, what a war in a environment in the body. So, this immune system fight back against the viruses or bacteria and they try to throw out that foreign person. But whereas in respect to non-communicable diseases, what happens? The body, the immune system the accepts these cancer cells as its own. So, it will not fight back the person who is developing silently and killing the body system, body's organs. So, they are nothing but cancerous cells. So, what happens? These cancerous cells over the period of time, they multiply. They multiply tremendously and they start eating up and killing the other organs. This is what, what happens in the body. So, one suppose for example, the person is diagnosed regarding the cancer development, the age of 60 means he would have developed that cancer maybe incidence maybe 10 years ago say at the age of 50. So, this only the quite signs and symptoms are more prevalent, more obvious seen you know only after 10 years or 8 years. But that does not happen with the COVID-19 viruses and all because they are acute and they are very severe and the symptoms are shown within fortnight. So, in the cancerous cell how it happens you see the many cells that continue to grow and they divide very fast and there will be uh, variations in the size and shapes of the cancerous cells. The nucleus that is larger and darker than the normal cells. Then there is abnormal number of chromosomes arranged in a disorganized fashion and a cluster of cells without a boundary so that they will spread to other organs very easily over the period of time. Then what are the different types of cancers? For men and women all majority of the cancers are same except species specific. So, let us see throat cancer cancer of the esophagus, lung cancer, stomach cancer, bowel cancer, cancer of the bladder, prostate cancer is usually species to men, then testicular men, then skin cancer. Whereas in women when coming to the women, ovarian cancer is specific to women, then breast cancer, nowadays we are hearing so much about breast cancer, then cancer of the uterus and cervix is also very common among women. Coming to the causes of cancer. So, there are environmental factors and genetic factors. When you compare these two, environmental factors overdose the genetic factors. So, again 
the risk factors are same tobacco alcohol dietary factors then occupational exposures virus attack parasites attack customs habits and our lifestyle changes then others like sun exposure to sunlight then pollution then drugs so there are n number of environmental factors the one may not understand why we have got it and sometimes the person who gets cancer is usually the first question comes is why me when there are so many people around me why only i got but not knowing exactly when it has started maybe the due to consumption of tobacco or chronic alcoholism then impaired dietary factors then occupational exposures then virus attack frequent virus attack frequent parasites attack means it is nothing but negligence of our health to keep it or to maintain it or optimum health no we fail at maintaining our optimum health so thereby maybe after the 40s or maybe after the 50s we may get the these cancers then what are the signs and symptoms of cancer so early cancer has no symptoms as early i said friends you cannot find any signs and symptoms of cancer the first at least 5 to 6 years only the symptoms are obvious after 5 years or 60 years 6 years maybe at the end of first stage or the end of second stage then change in bowel habits or bladder functions so if you notice very silently if at all there is any change in your bowel habits and bladder functions then there is some disturbance in your human system then sores that do not heal on time if at all you have a cut or any wound if it it should be healed within 3 to 4 days if it is not healing then there is some problem with the body then unusual bleeding or discharge especially for women maybe after menopausal or maybe before the menopausal if there is a consistent and severe bleeding and white discharge then there is a question mark why this is happening then lumps or thickening of breast or other parts of the body so in any parts of the body if you find any knots kind something like in local what we say gantu that is anywhere in the breast for women or any other parts then immediately that should, we should go for screening and indigestion or difficulty in swallowing so if at all a person is suffering from throat cancer or esophagus cancer or stomach cancer they suffer from indigestion and difficulty in swallowing the recent changes in the rot or emol if anyone is having over the body a mole or a rot and if there is a sudden growth of that then change in color or anything then there is a sign for the development of cancer then persistent coughing or hoarseness if there is a problem with the throat or lungs cancer then they may get a bronchitis they may get repeatedly the acute or chronic respiratory diseases pneumonia bronchitis bronchioles affect so thereby continuous coughing so it will not stop even after the treatment of antibiotics maybe first course or second course then even they also may have or may develop the cancer so these are all the some important symptoms friends one should observe these signs and symptoms very carefully on regular basis most of the time we neglect these signs and symptoms that are happening on our body negligence due to negligence how usually the acidity hyper acidity is leads to the heart attack and death of a person so when any anyway it is acidity so let me take some antacid and be at home so negligence leads to the death then coming to the diagnosis of the cancer the screening test then self examinations then biopsy the next series and scan ct scans and mri scans all these so regular testing so better always once we reach after 40s and 45 irrespective of sex should go for a regular check up of the 
bloods as well as the blood checking up and the body checking up so we'll come to know that what are we really suffering from coming to the treatments so cancer once if it is set in usually it is known only after the end of second stage and third stage then surgery is very important then application of radiotherapy application of chemotherapy immunotherapy hormone therapy depending upon the severity the condition usually all these treatments are advised to cancer patients prevention we let us highlight let us go more for prevention than welcoming the cancer so prevention is always better we being a nutritionist we keep on saying that prevention is better than cure so what are all the preventive measures we have to take care to keep away this cancer drug addict physical activities avoiding obesity healthy dietary practices reducing occupational and environmental exposures unnecessarily reducing alcohol uses immunization against hepatitis b virus safe sexual practices for avoiding cancer genesis so physical activities so as we already discussed and discussed about it the regular regularly there should not be any excuses for doing the physical exercises doing yoga pranayam meditation and walking then jogging or swimming any any physical exercises based on your age and your capacity you should undergo the physical activities on regular basis then avoiding obesity maintaining normal weight for height is very important so to maintain the normal weight for height healthy dietary practices are very important healthy dietary what are the healthy dietary practices so you can say so are there any exclusive foods which are um, really prevent the development of cancer dear friends no we cannot say because in nature there is no a single food miraculous food but always in combinations we have a balanced diet so when we stick on ourselves to balance diet majority of the non communicable diseases can be kept away from us so healthy dietary practices means what all of you know all these days about the food pyramid the foundation of the food pyramid is a millet cereals and millets then comes the fruits and vegetables then comes the pulses then comes the fruits and vegetables then milk and milk products then spices and condiments then non vegetarian foods then processed foods keep the processed food at the top means very low very little preference you must give to the processed foods and more preference is given to the cereals whole cereals and whole millets natural foods it's always natural foods but what has happened the pyramid has become ulta down upside down we go for more of processed foods more of saturated foods more of high cholesterol foods or more of fatty foods or more of salt food more of preserved foods that we are our diet is predominantly say about 50 to 60% is processed foods only 30 to 40% is cooked food that should not happen so by maintaining healthy dietary practices one will definitely keep away the cancer reducing occupational and environmental exposures chemical exposures so unnecessarily going into that area and getting affected reduce then reducing alcohol uses so moderate consumption of alcohol is always good say about 60 to 70 or 60 to 80 ml but if it exceeds more those who are chronic alcohols subsequently they will develop the cirrhosis of liver because it will affect mainly the liver so cirrhosis of liver is nothing but the liver cancer so this is again the cirrhosis of liver is a silent killer the person may not come to know even after drinking of 10 years and 15 years so he will feel see i am drinking nothing is happening to me i am okay i am fine but he won't know that liver is slowly every day liver is dying cell by cell the liver is dying so that dying of liver is called as a cirrhosis of liver so consumption of alcohol should be reduced minimized to 60 to 80 ml an immunization against vitamin b virus usually what we call 
white jaundice so the person will immediately die because of the white jaundice so immunization of this against hepatitis b is essential then safe sexual practices for avoiding cancer genesis is appreciated then lower your risk of cancer with antioxidant rich diet so these antioxidants what are the roles of these antioxidants these antioxidants act on the cancerous cells anti carcin these cancerous cells are called as anti carcinogens so these antioxidants it fights back fights against the these carcinogens so they are called as a anti carcinogens so these anti antioxidants are mainly predominantly in the nature are present only only in vegetarian foods not from the non vegetarian foods so when this when you have to take a full amount of antioxidants they are from the plant based plant based means how the nature has all colors so it has a red color it has a green color it has yellow color it has a white color it has a magenta color it has a pink color all colors should be adopted should be used in our daily diet daily plan so you can say carotenoids anthos anthocyanins xanthons xanthins all these colors pigments play a very important role in fighting back the cancer so diets high in plant based foods especially fruits and vegetables should be consumed on regular like how what should be advised how it should be a diet a diet should have a colorful as i said and another very important is going for seasonal foods and seasonal fruits and vegetables during rainy season then after rainy the winter season after the winter the summer season so during that time the what fruits and vegetables are available those fruits and vegetables should be consumed on regular basis minimum 4 to 5 times for example during rainy what is available amlas are available guavas are available so vitamin c rich foods we should have so what we grow for example where we are we are in karnataka state or we are in gujarat state or we are in kolkata state so wherever we are and what foods fruits and vegetables are grown in that particular area should be eaten maximum and fresh so that will boost our energy the boost our immune system with all colorful so minimum in a day one should consume a healthy diet how a healthy diet should be one should consume minimum 3 to 4 cereals because we being a indians our diet is predominantly carbohydrate rich cereal based not legume based so when it is cereal based means right from morning when you take our breakfast lunch or midday mid meal lunch snacks and dinner is predominantly it is a cereal based when we are taking 13 to 14 servings of cereals per day then if you consume only one cereal throughout the day definitely in a day or years we are going to invite hypertension we are going to invite diabetes we are going to invite cvd instead break your whole day with the minimum 3 to 4 cereals and millets so morning suppose if you have one cereal afternoon another cereal and again evening one cereal and night another cereal to say it is very easy to educate it is very easy but to practice it is very difficult but you have to practice on daily basis for a longer period morning suppose if you have a rice afternoon try to have a wheat evenings try to have a millet again night try to have another millet in this way suppose if you try to inculcate in your family habits 3 to 4 cereals and millets in a day it is always advisable it is always good then coming to the pulses we have a varieties of pulses we have a red color we have a green color we have a white color we have magenta color pulses but are we using all these pulses and whole grain whole grams we are not using them so try to inculcate include all these pulses and whole grams regularly one day red gram another day green gram another day um, cow peas another day cow peas another day horse gram we don't make use like that 
we use all this what I said just now once in fortnight or once in a month like that no but all these pulses again the varieties of pulses should be used on regular basis another tips what I want to give suppose if you are not able to use all these pulses on regular basis make the podies chutney powders of all these pulses regularly say you can make urad dal you can make black gram you can make red gram you can make horse gram you can make cowpea all these pulses whole pulses powders you can make and use them on top of your chutney your rice or rotis or chapati or porota whatever you are making on regular basis you can use in this way try to include majority of the legumes then coming to fruits and vegetables minimum in a day one should have three to four vegetables morning one afternoon one or two and again in the evening night dinner in this way we are consuming more of the other vegetables which are rich source of antioxidants rich source of fiber so diet high in fruits may lower the risk of stomach and lung cancer then foods high in lycopene this lycopene is a pigment red color pigment is present in tomatoes okay they usually contract the cancer cells then guava watermelon may lower the risk of prostate cancer and eating vegetables containing carotenoids such as carrots just now what i said papaya mango may reduce the risk of lung mouth pharynx and larynx cancers then diets high in non starchy vegetables such as cluster beans spinach nol kohl may help protect against stomach and esophageal cancer so eating the vitamin c rich foods oranges berries peas dark leaf leafy vegetables and other foods high in vitamin c may also protect against esophageal cancer so this vitamin c it facilitates the he- healing of the cells damaged cells so that is why usually vitamin c is prescribed so it heals the any damaged or wound inter- internal inside the body so the best source of vitamin c is amla or lemon which is available in our garden so pluck the lemon or amla and have one amla just one small single amla is equivalent to four apples so what do we do we go to market and purchase apple paying 150 and 200 rupees kgs which is not at all fresh because the apple should we are not growing the apple apple should come from the north india then to our place then we go and purchase then after purchasing bring it to the home after getting home we keep it in the refrigerator for 3 4 days then remove from the refrigerator then have it is it a fresh fruit no then better whatever the fruits that you are growing growing in your garden maybe a pomegranate maybe a sita cluster apple maybe avocados all we are growing amblas we are growing in our garden a small garden or in front or back side so those fruits just fresh pluck them and have and see how beautiful your health will be coming to a diabetes mellitus thing all of us know everybody has become their own body doctors with respect to diabetes mellitus so you all know the diabetes mellitus why do we get because of hyper there is a inactivity or insufficient secretion of insulin in the body so diabetes mellitus is a group of diseases characterized by high levels of blood glucose resulting from defects in insulin production insulin action or both the effects of diabetes mellitus include long term damage dysfunction and failure of various organs symptoms of diabetes so what are the symptoms of diabetes high blood levels of glucose blur usually it is termed as a hyperglycemia blurry vision fatigue thirst painful urination frequent urination sores that do not heal nausea vomiting weight loss hunger all these are all the symptoms of diabetes then the types of diabetes type 1 diabetes mellitus type 2 diabetes mellitus gestational diabetes usually what is this type 1 diabetes 
It was previously called insulin dependent diabetes mellitus IDDM or it is usually called as a juvenile onset diabetes. So the type 1 diabetes develops when the body's immune system destroys pancreatic beta cells, the only cell in the body that makes the hormone insulin that regulates the blood glucose. So the type 1 diabetes may account for 5 to 10 percent of all diagnosed cases of diabetes. So you can say this form of diabetes usually strikes children and young adults although disease onset can occur at any age. Risk factors for type 1 diabetes may include autoimmune genetic or and environmental factors. In India, the type 1 incidence is a bit less when you compare to type 2. Type 2 diabetes mellitus was previously called non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus NIDDM or adult onset diabetes then type 2 diabetes may account for about 90 percent to 95 percent of all diagnosed cases of diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is increasingly being diagnosed in children and adolescents very recently nowadays. It usually begins as insulin resistance a disorder in which the cells do not use insulin properly. As as the need for insulin rises, the pancreas gradually loses its ability to produce insulin in the body. Type 2 diabetes is associated with older age, obesity, family history of diabetes, history of gestational diabetes, impaired glucose metabolism, physical inactivity and recent ethnicity. Then the third one is gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is usually it is a form of glucose intolerance that is diagnosed in some women during pregnancy. Usually after the third trimester, the women will suffer from gestational diabetes and usually it disappears after the termination of the pregnancy. But for about in say among 5 to 10 percent of women, it continues as a type 2 diabetes. Coming to the very important, the management of diabetes. The major components of the treatment of diabetes are diet and exercises, oral hypoglycemic therapy, then insulin therapy. How to prevent or control the diabetes? Prevention all starts with a better lifestyle, eating healthier foods that is fiber rich, being active taking medicine as directed, taking care of your body, check feet to make sure there is no nerve damage or interruption of blood flow. So when it coming to the prevention or the control of diabetes, in Asia we all are getting every day more, the prevalence rate of development of diabetes is more among Asians, especially no less even in our states. Why are we getting diabetes so much? Because usually the preventive measures are not followed before getting. So we eat lot of fried foods, we eat lot of sugary foods, we do not do activities, physical activity. You know there is no definite pattern, there is no systematic in our daily routine. Let us see when it comes, let us see. Once the diabetes is set in, then the one will or individual will become very alert. Then he or she will start walking regularly. He or she will start stopping eating high sugar and stop eating sugar uh, fried foods and go for walking. That should not happen. Whether we get the diabetes or not, one should start practicing all these on regular basis. Maybe say from your adolescent onwards, maybe at the age of 20, 21 regular walking, regular consumption, preferably low sugar foods, low fat foods, low sodium foods. When you maintain this, you can keep away this hypertension, diabetes and cardiovascular. Nobody will enter our body or nobody will knock the door. But usually we do not do, we fail to do that. Or another tendency I have seen among the population, the one who has got the diabetes and anyway medications are there so they may usually may and attend the festivals and some 
conferences and all and there will be a lot of display of sweets and the people around them even if they refuse also people around them come on it's all right have it today anyway and take one medicine one drug what is there so this is the attitude we have developed in our community that should not be the attitude ultimately if something goes wrong my neighbor my son my daughter my husband my wife will not suffer but i only have to undergo the pain so keep that in your mind always so prevention all starts with a better lifestyle eating healthier foods especially the fiber rich foods low sugar complex carbohydrates food should be consumed so what are those complex carbohydrates complex carbohydrates come from the fiber rich foods so millets should be had instead of refined foods so refined foods means what maida should be avoided sago should be avoided then split flour should be avoided instead go for whole so in most of the families i have seen when you get the atta whether it may be jowar atta or bajra atta or the wheat flour atta we sieve the atta and use for making chapatis or roti that is very wrong practice should not sieve the atta or flour when you are sieving means you are removing the important fiber aspect from that and again you are eating the refined carbohydrates which raises the sugar level in the blood very soon so instead when you add more amount of fiber into this atta there will be slow release of sugar in the body so thereby sugar control will be better than going for the refined atta so practicing a healthier foods like taking the fiber rich foods so there are nutrition a lot of research is being done on some fiber rich foods so for example the very recent concept is a whole, consumption of whole millets and another one is a methi seeds they say so these methi seeds preferably how it should be consumed i'll just give you just 1 teaspoon or 2 teaspoon methi seeds can be soaked in water and this water this water next day it can be thrown and sprout you can make the sprouts or without making the sprouts also you can consume the make into a, a curry out of it so it will not be a bitter many people do not eat this methi methi uh, seeds uh, favoring that they are very bitter in taste but when you soak and you discard the water there is no problem discard the water and going for making a methi chutney can have that methi chutney along with the rotis or chapatis or have or make it methi curry you can make that also can be um, that will go very well with the rotis and chapatis or make a methi sprouts that sprouts you can have along with your salads so in this way consumption of methi seeds consumption of um, what do you call this lady's finger consumption of bitter gourd consumption of nol call should be there on regular basis so that regularly you can maintain a normal blood sugar level within 140 within 140 mm hg so you can minimize your taking drugs or minimize or going for you know minimize your insulin therapy so being active always then taking medicines as directed by the physician taking care of your body then check feet to make sure there is no nerve damage or interruption of blood flow we may get the hurt we may not notice it later that will happens because the body is full of sugar because we are diabetic we are sweet people we are sugary people so naturally people want to attract who people means what microorganisms so viruses they want to thrive on us thrive on our blood so naturally what happens there will be a infection so those infections should be treated on regular basis then taking care of teeth because teeth is some the entry box the entry level of all the foods what we send to our stomach majority of the time we eat the food but we don't rinse our mouth after eating the food rinsing minimum for 20 seconds 20 to 30 seconds and this should be repeated for 2 to 3 times after consumption of either a liquid or a solid food so by this you know you are maintaining a teeth care properly then controlling blood pressure and high so blood pressure because blood pressure or hypertension or cardiovascular diseases 
cancer and diabetes all are interrelated if we invite one guest all other 3 4 guests are unpaid they simply enter our body without asking our permission then no smoking then check in with your doctor at least once a month have your blood sugar checked along with weight blood 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 pressure this is regarding the diabetes mellitus diabetes mellitus once it is set in it has to be managed because it is a disorder metabolic disorder so it will be with us as long as we are here on the earth so naturally maintaining a diabetes proper diet exercise medications are very important if you maintain the exercises and diet properly then automatically you can only restrict yourself with the oral drugs otherwise if you do not have a control over the oral drugs then we have to go for the insulin therapy and diabetes mellitus over the 5 years there will not be any much changes but long term complications are more for retinopathy neuropathy then if one has to undergo any surgery the diabetes the sugar level will not come under control so those complications to avoid those complications so diet is very important exercise is very important keeping the stress level at zero majority of the time what happens we suffer from the stress all piti piti stress piti piti things we say isn't it the stress is usually due to stress we invite majority of the diseases like how it is all the diseases come through the psychosomatic psycho means mind soma means body the disease come from the mind to body so why mind means due to stress pressure tension so continuous pressure to the mind means that will effect that will reflect on the body so slowly there will be a changes in the pattern the body system and we will develop the cvd we will develop hypertension we will develop cardiovascular so we have to reduce nobody can reduce our stress i only can manage my stress i am the only person who can overcome my stress the people around me counsel me people around me give me some medicines people around me advise me but at end of the day it is my stress i have to manage i have to overcome when you overcome then definitely we will overcome all this diabetes and other complicated diseases now coming to another non communicable disease that is blindness nowadays day year by year even there is a prevalence of blindness is more among the population as per who blindness is defined as is an inability to count fingers at a distance of 3 meters blindness is the inability to see anything including light if you are partially blind you have limited vision for example you may have blurry vision or the inability to distinguish the shapes of objects complete blindness means you can't see at all that's a complete blindness then legal blindness refers to vision that's highly compromised what are the causes for development of blindness communicable diseases like trachoma smallpox venereal diseases frequent attack of virus frequent attack of bacteria and fungal parasites leads to slowly leads to development of blindness in india smallpox is responsible for 60% and trachoma 20% responsible for blindness also non communicable diseases like cataract glaucoma diabetes are responsible for blindness x rays and uv rays are also responsible for the development of partial or complete blindness people working in factories welding processes workshops are liable to cause the eye injuries then what are the prevention of a uh, prevention measures and control measures treatment of infectious diseases improving one's own nutrition then personal hygiene of the eye person working in factories and workshop are provided with vitamin a supplements 
then people should be educated regarding the diseases of the eye and its preventive measures so what is very important is this preventive measures taking care of eye on once in fortnight you know take the water in your forehand and you know dip your eye in that and cleansing that is natural cleansing with a good water cleaned water not again the infected or polluted water cleaning your eyes regularly or again trying once in a while is always better for removing the toxins that are present in the eyes retina then another very important is resting closing your eyes and resting for 5 minutes and 10 minutes is a good exercises then there are eye exercises usually during given pranayama and yoga therapy those eyes exercises are also they will improve the eyesight so those eyes exercises should be practiced on daily basis then another very important is the diet so what is that diet so diet especially vitamin a usually we have vitamins fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins and the fat soluble vitamins vitamin a is highly responsible for the eyesight so what are those fat soluble and rich sources available they are nothing but animal sources and the plant sources animal sources are called as vitamin a sources plant sources are called as beta carotene animal sources like liver fish okay then milk egg poultry all are having very good source of vitamin a which can be had in our diet on regular then beta carotene plant based vitamin a sources are all yellow orange fruits and vegetables like as it is shown in the picture it can be a berries it can be a tomatoes it can be a yellow um, capsicums it may be a papaya carrots pumpkins all this yellow orange fru- fruits and vegetables are very good source of vitamin a so apart from this the supplementations of vitamin a are usually advised under medical prescriptions coming to these are all the various you know, programs are undertaken by the ministry of health and family welfare government of india regarding overcome the non communicable diseases in india these slides so these are the products developed in the department of food processing and nutrition you can say majority of the products are developed using the millets the local fruits local vegetables so local cereals and millets so in the left side you can see the jowar root jowar laddus are made jowar is grown very much in bijapur jowar laddus are prepared nippattu is made out of bajra then uh, beetroot halwa made using jaggery then uh, the barley rolls barley rolls barley and in combination with the garden crust seed roll rolls then this is a second one is the typical a north karnataka plate the lunch plate you can say it has a jowar roti safflower linseed chutney what i was referring earlier along with that curds then sprouts um, palya then bartha then salad so all these you know a typical north karnataka style of the thali then the groundnuts laddu then uh, oats deep fried pakoras and then lemon and aloe vera pickle so we have a varieties of pickles mango pickle lemon pickle or ginger pickle and so on but here we have made and developed lemon along with aloe vera pickle which was really very delicious then the oats cutlets then uh, bajra and uh, um, fox tail millet uh, um, bisabele bath we have prepared and the lettuce salad then uh, for diabetics this baked um, fryams of lady's finger then this groundnuts 
which are exclusively available in the North Karnataka, especially in our Bijapur town, which are more delicious than the regular almonds and cashews and which are cheaply available here. These products, these groundnuts, nowhere else available. They are fried here, local roasted. We have a what you call this roasting units, the local roasted units. They will sell this roasted uh, groundnuts, which are delicious, economical and more nutritious when you compare with the other nuts and oil seeds. And this is khandvi usually is prepared. This khandvi we have made out of jowar flour. So like this, many um, products uh, we have developed with respect to the local ready to eat millets, upma, ready to eat millets, pulao and so on products we have prepared and developed for the common norm for the people those who are suffering from diabetes and cardiovascular diseases so to conclude my talk so what is very important is at the end of the day is i am the best doctor for my body so if there is any changes any alterations if you find in your body system you have to be very alert. Do not be negligent of your bodies. It gives you sign. No disease, no disorder will come suddenly. It would have started maybe one year or two years ago. Maybe we are at failure to recognize the signs and symptoms, the silent signs and symptoms, even for the diabetes or CVD or the cancer. So be a silent observer of your body. Be the best doctor for your body and observe if some symptoms or some signs are, you know, something different than the regular. Immediately go for a doctor checkup and get your body scanned and see the results and try to take accordingly the treatment. And even after 40s, your diet should be moderate because after 40s, what happens? There will be less physical exertion, less physical activity. We will be doing a lot of sitting activities, sedentary life, but consumption will be more. Usually there is a phase, how from the student, from the student, the student will get uh, settled down. After settling, he may, he or she may get the job. Then after the getting job, promotions and all. So while doing students, we are very thin and very slender, very nice. Our BMI is intact because we are doing a lot of physical activity. So after once we finish our degree program, we search for a job when we get the job there is a little bit physical activity because we are just beginners so after when we settle for four to five years naturally there is a promotion promotion means it is a promotion simultaneously not only from the financial aspect even from the activity aspect also we are promoted then the second promotion again lesser physical activity but attending meetings and conferences workshops and so on and lot of fried foods we eat and we only deposit in the body we don't spend them so naturally what happens development of obesity also same we love to observe we love to see the games cricket and football same as spectators we enjoy but we don't play so while spectating also what do we do we have a nuts and oil seeds we have a puppets we have a fryams and we enjoy eating together with so many people so we don't play so there we are sitting and storing our energy and when you see the difference between the postman and the clerk the postman the one who is undergoes lot of physical activity he goes door to door and delivers a tapal or letters when you see the clerk clerk is sitting on the table and his activity is less so he can see he is more healthier than the clerk so in this way what happens after the middle age naturally our activity pattern reduces so when activity pattern reduces we have to be alert we have to be alert and we have to do a lot of modifications in our daily diet so simultaneously we have got to reduce our consumption eating habits so if we are eating three rotis or three chapatis back to two rotis or two chapatis or one likewise we have to slowly reduce and because our physical activity is also reduced so in this way maintaining our pattern the daily routine and sticking on to balanced diet and making feeling yourself always healthy and happy not ever feeling yourself lonely at any cost i am here even if i am alone also try to use that 
loneliness into some constructive activities so that you don't feel lonely i am here i have come here on this earth to make myself happy to make myself feel good and satisfied keep that in your mind and try to practice if you have some uh, Mm, inclination towards spirituality try to practice some spirituality get some happiness try to talk to your friends never feel yourself lonely so that you will not be under stress when you are not under stress naturally you automatically you are very active and you are healthy at the end of the day the take home message for all of you dear friends is love all and serve all when we love anybody unconditionally automatically you know we are always happy thank you thank you very much thank you madam for your valuable speech on uh, dietary recommendations for non communicable diseases during uh, covid 19 situations and uh, thank you participants for taking part in this uh, webinar series on behalf of karnataka state akamadi women university and department of food processing and nutrition i thank you ma'am and uh, thank you participants